what do you do? Uh, Kurt Meyer. I'm the Vice President of Human Resources at Methodist Health Hospitals. And how did you get into HR? Uh, I got into HR by accident. I uh, wanted to be an architect, um, wandered over to the business school instead, started taking business classes, and one of my professors was a labor arbitrator. So it was very fascinating, and I've always liked working. I work for my dad, and uh, I wanted to make sure people enjoy their work, and I thought this is a way that I could help them enjoy their work. So I liked it. I'm an outgoing personality, and I like to help other people, and that's how I got into the line of work. Got a bachelor's degree, uh, went right on to master's degree because it was high unemployment when I graduated. And, you know, getting a job in HR and anywhere is one thing, but actually staying in the industry over a length of time and ensuring that you have positive career growth is a whole other skill of its own. So what are some steps that you've taken within your career to ensure that you've had continued growth? Yeah, I think some very specifics that I tell everybody. Number one, the easiest way to get into a, a HR is through recruitment or employment, temp agency, filling jobs. People don't give it enough credence of how difficult it really is to hire right. Um, <clears throat> but most people start as a recruiter. And I gave this to my son. He just started as a HR manager. He just finished his degree. Um, and my oldest has an HR degree. He went a different route. He's a Catholic priest. So we're all helping people, but I think that's the easiest route to start is in recruiting. Second, um, be a sponge, learn and grow organically in that organization. They'll, they'll help you do training and development. They'll help you do orientation programs. Um, they'll bleed you over in employee relations eventually. So you can grow in a big organization organically. The second way to grow your career is through networking. I very, very, very much encourage everybody that wants to be in human resources to get into the network. A SHRM, um, a local HR uh, group, basically, that get together and talk um, and reach out to other people and ask for advice. Because when you do that networking, you grow and learn a great deal and you get your name out there that people know you. And then get back to people when you get asked a question. So a lot of people don't do that because the young people today, they're doing this all day. It is text. This actually, you can talk into it. It was a phone originally. Now no one uses it as a phone. But having that personal relationship with others is crucial because they may think, oh, I got a job. Kurt was interesting. He got back to me. I like that guy. I'm going to call him and see if he wants a job. That's exactly how it happens. So people need to be likable. And, and we just covered some of the skills that you need in order to have successful career growth, but there's also skills that you need on the job in order to be successful yeah. day to day. Can you talk about some of those skills that HR professionals can adopt to yes. have that level of success? Yeah, there's technical pieces that you'll learn as you go from lawyers and consultants and um, professionals that'll teach you the technical components. The piece they can teach you is emotional intelligence um, and the ability to have some critical thinking skills. So, um, and then some basic um, trust and credibility. So when you're in HR, you have to develop trust and credibility with the people that you serve. And you have to be very authentic um, and you have to be accountable, get back to people, follow up with people, be trustworthy. Um, and emotional intelligence is, is the ability to listen to the content and the emotion. OK, so you've got to be in the moment when you're dealing with people and having that personality. So it's not all about the technical skills. It's a lot about who you are as a person and be comfortable in your own skin. Be willing to be vulnerable, be willing to have what I call a humble inquiry. <clears throat> humble inquiry is to say, tell me more. Um, why do you feel that way? Um, what have you tried in the past? Just to be inquisitive um, and not to have all the answers and not come across as the Gestapo um, or spy. You're supposed to help people achieve their dreams. 
So three books I ask him to read for three or four, um, working with emotional intelligence, um, seven habits of highly effective people, humble inquiry and the dream manager, because that's what we're doing. We're actually making people or helping people achieve their dreams. Okay. Compensation benefits, a new job, a promotion, uh, all of those things, retirement, helping with their kids' education, we actually help people achieve their dreams. Kind of like the movie where the guy was, uh, he was an employment agency and they put him as an imposter for uh, the president of the United States because he looked like him. <laughs> remember that movie? You're too, I'm you're trying too, to remember. <laughs> you're too young, but it was, uh, it's a good movie. You have to look it up. But anyway, that's a, those, the soft skills are very important. The technical skills you'll you'll get. And when we dive into maybe the more technical skills, we look at some of the tools that you use on whether day to day basis or weekly basis to be successful. What are some of the tools that you use that enable you to do your job better? Oh my gosh, uh, calendar and meetings and text. Besides that, uh, you got to be pretty good at data, Excel spreadsheets and pivot tables. Now that's, that ship left the station long ago with me. But uh, a new person getting into HR can, has to man, manage and master Excel spreadsheets and social media. So they got to be comfortable in Zoom meetings. They got to be comfortable in uh, recruiting on social media. And they got to be comfortable in dealing with data. Um, because we're very much an imprecise field and we have to add numbers to things. So if we had a sign-on bonus, how much is the sign-on bonus is going to cost us for this population compared to our turnover and what we're spending by losing people? So you've got to have that kind of ability. But I'd say the soft skills are very much lacking in human resources. Uh, people need to make a connection. It's all about relationships. You've got to have a good relationship with employees and you've got to have a good relationship with management, both. So. And one of the things that we touched on earlier, which I found was really interesting, is that you have kids that are getting into HR. And if that's the case, then you know they understand that you really like HR. Otherwise, they want to do it. So yeah. I have a feeling that you have a good understanding of what goes into picking an HR job that you'll enjoy. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, there's, there's two different sides to it. There's the kind of the employee relations side and recruitment, or there's the comp and benefits and safety. So one's real anal, compensation, benefits, safety. Those are people that like to do stuff. They like to calculate stuff. They like their computer and, and numbers and all that stuff. The other side of HR is the messy side. You got somebody screaming at you that says, my manager is discriminating against me. I'm going to call a lawyer because you guys are – going to get sued and this is ridiculous and i'm going to the papers <laughs> that gets real messy so you've got to be able to on that side you've got to be able to deal with the personalities involved or a training or you're in a town hall meeting and people say our wages aren't high enough here and you guys are screwing us how come you don't pay us more uh and i'm getting the shaft because of it you got to deal with that emotional piece and you got to be able to deal with it with authenticity and courage not everybody can do that okay um, some people can't get up in front of orientation with 50 people in the room and talk about their benefits so you're either very extroverted you can you feel comfortable in that or you're very introverted and you like your your computer you need both and touching on something that you had brought up which i thought was really interesting is that we have very different ways of establishing, um, I guess, of people thinking that they're establishing connection today. So a lot of people are using their phones and we have the rise of social media as well as what we've seen with um, the recent pandemic with Zoom and people adopting more work from home policies as well as just tools to help them work from home. And all this goes into where the future of HR is going. And this is a bit of a broad question, but if you had to describe where the future of HR is going, what are some key things that you would mention? Uh, well, I think there'll be parts of the Zoom stuff that stay. 
Um, so people don't have to travel. It's very much more productive. <clears throat> old, old people like me went at it reluctantly. Young people like it because they don't have to drive in their car and they can work from home. I get that. Um, there is a piece where you've got to be present, though. you got to show up on a job. So I can't ask nurses and healthcare, for instance, to come to work and put their life at risk with COVID patients. And oh, by the way, I'll be the vice president of HR. I'll stay in my cozy little office at home. That doesn't cut it. You get that, you're going to be fired in a heartbeat. So I, I do believe the mask will go away. I do believe we'll get back to normal. I've seen plenty of or read about pandemics in my day. Um, this too will pass, okay? There's been a whole lot worse plagues than this one. So eventually we need to have the confidence to get back to it. <clears throat> and people need to develop those relationships. Um, I think HR has to move closer to the business, unfortunately, the X's and O's and the numbers and prove why is this important to us? Because it's getting very costly. Um, and so I think they're going to have to spend more time understanding the business needs. Um, they're going to become more valuable because we do not have a workforce to depend upon anymore. 2.0 is the number. We need 2.0 children per family to keep our workforce for the future. We're at just 2.0 and heading to 1.9. China is at 1.7. Japan's at 1.7. So Japan actually imports on the boat 500,000 workers every day to come to Japan to work because they don't have enough workers. Okay. And all about, all about workers, but they got to be here legally, like everybody else got here legally. So there's going to be um, some need for some technological advances on jobs because there's not going to be as many people. We're going to have to pay higher because you're not going to be able to hire people to do those jobs because there isn't a workforce. And we're going to have to try to hold on to the people that are about ready to retire to have stop that brain drain so that old people like me can come back and mentor the young people to help them be more successful um, because they don't have that kind of training and experience. They just, they're just jumping into it. So I'm mentoring my son, Ryan over the phone because he's a department of one. Um, so I think those are some things that are really going to be different in the years to come. Yeah. And with all these changes, um, what we're going to experience is, new hurdles. And there's a lot of existing hurdles that will continue to be there within the HR executive role and will probably just never go away. And there's be time tested solutions to solve them. So can you yep. talk about some of the hurdles that you see within the HR executive role and, and how you solve those? Uh, me as an HR executive, I think the, the key for me and most HR executives is First of all, to develop strong relationships with your peers. Because if my peer vice presidents don't want to work with me, they just kind of shun me. And then suddenly I'm sitting by myself and suddenly the CEO's getting feedback that says, he's not helping me my, with my business. You know, whether it's the chief medical officer, chief nursing officer. So I have to develop those strong relationships to understand what their needs are um, what are the difficulties they're going through? How can I provide some solutions to them in a manner that they want to work with me? So it's all about that trust. It's an emotional water glass. It's, you got to have a lot of water in the glass because you're going to ha have to fight from time to time. Then you're going to take some of that water out. Well, if there's no water in the glass, it's a very raw relationship. So have that water, have that positive relationship so you can have that yin yang and that relationship with VPs. And then the second, I need to be, um, again, more business-minded to be able to provide them good solutions that can work for them. Um, and then the third thing, you got to be able to tell them, look, your kids are ugly. Sorry. <clears throat> and they don't like to hear that. But if you have good credibility and you have a good heart that you're saying in the right way, um, that will help them in their business, you're going to be fine. But you have to work on those relationships first. I'm in this job nine weeks now because the person before me did not have strong relationships and was not trusted. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, build that trust, work on that relationship, then work on the X's and O's. 
Interesting. And a lot of people watching this video are looking to break into HR or already in HR and looking to level up their career into an HR executive position. Um, what are the signs that, you know, HR is right for them, especially taking all the way to becoming an HR executive? Yeah, I, I didn't see myself sitting here when I started off and I wanted to be maybe a manager or a director. I had no idea. If I was a VP at 32 at Elkhart General Hospital. I wouldn't have hired myself. Um, I had 12 people in HR and I was scared to death. But, you know, I just started with a blank piece of paper and went at it. Um, I think you've got to have some, one, a pretty good healthy self-image, not to be afraid to apologize. You're going to make mistakes. Two, you got to be in it to really help people. If you're focused on money, you're not going to get it because they'll, they'll smell that out long ago. You've got to be able to help people achieve their dreams from the janitor to the CEO. You got to develop that trust and credibility all the way through and be able to see the big picture and say, okay, what if, how do we make this thing happen? And um, people will want to work with you and say, this guy could lead it because he's got innovative ideas. He's curious. He's got some business savvy. He understands what I'm trying to go through. And I like working with him. So being a good leader, you've got to have some variety in who you are. And you got to be an interesting individual. Curious, good sense of humor, uh, a business acumen, um, very planful, get things done, <clears throat> um, be willing to learn from others, and be a person that other people want to work for. Um, so those things helped me to get excelling. And I did move my family around a lot early. And sometimes you have to jump organizations, not too often, but every three years to get that level of experience is probably necessary. Um, unless, very few people just get promoted up within the same organization. But unfortunately, that just doesn't happen anymore. Um, <clears throat> but I moved around different industries and was able to round my abilities out. So I was more attractive because I had a plethora of experience and I had a, a graduate degree. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Very, very appreciative of your answer. And you know, before we hop off here, I want to just make sure if there's anything that we didn't touch upon, if there's any other advice that you have for people looking to break into HR or looking to level up uh, their HR role. Yeah, I, I think you probably should do some self-assessments. I think those are okay. Go on there and take a free disc profile. Um, you know, some of those career matching things that you'd like. If you're, if you like your numbers and you like your math, there is a part of HR that's for you, but not everything. Um, if you don't like making public speaking engagements and if you don't like crowds and you don't like conflict, probably not a good idea. <clears throat> um, there's a conflict, uh, um, assessment out there that says, how do you address conflict? Do you run away from it or do you try to find a collaborative agreement or compromise? And if you're always in, um, denial or you're always avoiding conflict, then this isn't the job for you. Um, <clears throat> if you really want to help people, um, and you have an inquisitive interest in other people, then absolutely. Um, HR could be for you for sure, but you've got to be able to have <clears throat> the, the right personality. Um, and that can develop. I mean, I, I wasn't always outgoing. I was shy as heck. So my skills in talking to people came from Amway. I kid you not. I sold soap in college to my mother, to her girlfriends, and I was terrible at it. But it got me the confidence to be able to read a book called um, Think and Go Rich and the Positive of uh, Positive Thinking. And Think Big and, and I think the book was called Think Big and How to Win Friends and How to Win Friends and Influence People. That taught me a ton that gave me the ability to be successful in HR had nothing to do with it. So you can learn to be a better leader. You can learn these traits. You just have to have a willingness and interest and then uh, God takes over. And suddenly you turn around, you don't have any hair anymore, 
<clears throat> you're running kind of crazy. Your jokes aren't as funny, but you're a VP, and there you are, and you're doing good things for people. <laughs> uh, and for the students watching who are interested in connecting with you, can they connect with you on a platform like LinkedIn or anything like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. As I – as I live and breathe, I just told you what I do to help people make their dreams come true. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't allow that. Absolutely. Ask me anything you want. There's been a lot of people help me. I'm glad to help you because uh, we need good people in HR. So chances are, if you're watching this video, that his LinkedIn URL will be in the description below. And just go ahead and click through that if you want to go ahead and connect with Kurt. Well, Thank you so much for being here today and doing this interview. Um, it does mean a lot. Josh, it's a pleasure. Happy days.